For many new parents, the joy of their newborn baby is quickly tempered by the nightmare of sleepless nights as their little bundle of joy suddenly turns into a nocturnal wailing monster. Well, Anastasia Baker from Night Nannies is here to help give you the nights of uninterrupted sleep that you can only dream about. Welcome, Anastasia, and Amelia and Alexandra as well, we mustn't forget. Now, <laughs> why did you set up Night Nannies? Well, Alexandra and Amelia were my inspiration. Um, Al came very soon after Amelia, and all I was worried about were the sleepless nights, and I was working at the time. And I rang up about 18 agencies to try and get some help at night, and they all couldn't help me. They thought it was a very strange request. So I eventually found somebody, um, and she was just fantastic. Just three nights a week, that's all I had, but it was enough to get over the exhaustion of getting up three or four times a night and trying to be in a sane and alert state of mind to work in the day. Mm. So what do night nannies do for you when they turn up then? Well, they arrive at nine and leave at seven in the morning, and they're there to do what a maternity nurse would do, um, i.e. sort out any sleep or feeding problems, organize, um, uh, you know any sleeping routines that that need to be organized um, if your baby's up all night if they've got colic or reflux the, the nanny will hold them and sort them out mm. um, and give advice on breastfeeding or you know any issues like that organize the nursery mm -hmm. and sort out a, a good routine for you to follow mm -hmm. and Anastasia what, how many nannies do you have on your books 120 now all working out around London area mm -hmm. and we've got eight franchises around the country um, in all the sort of major um, counties. So I think overall maybe three or four hundred working around the UK. And, and what qualifications do you need to become a nine nanny? A real mix, but obviously have a lot of newborn experience because most of the babies are a few weeks old. And we've got a lot of midwives, a lot of pediatric nurses that work at Great Ormond Street in the day and they want to do maybe two or three nights a week for us. Yeah. Great. And I mean, I remember from my, my first baby being born, those first two or three weeks are just mm. awful. Exactly. Because, you know, you, you're sort of, you, you can't hardly recovered from the birth and you're kind of literally pulling yourself up. And my partner was great and he kind of did the shift with me. But still, it was really tough and especially with the breastfeeding. But how, how can, um, say, the, the night nanny help if you are breastfeeding, for example? Well, they the can night. bring the baby in right. for a feed in the middle of the night because the feeding only takes a few you know 20 minutes it's all the settling and yeah. sorting out after that the winding can take up to an hour you know and so they can do that or you can express some milk for the feed at night for the nanny to give or you can just come in and, mm. and do the feed and then leave and mm. the beauty of it is you don't have to worry about changing the nappy or, or sorting out the 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 winding and the mm. burping and all of that mm. now I mean it, you, you worked in the media yourself, and, and, and it's, it sounds like a very extravagant thing to be able to organise. How expensive is it to book a night, Nanny? Prices start from £60 a night, mm -hmm. um, and it is a luxury. And a lo most, the average person does maybe two or three nights a week, and they get the same nanny who comes back week after week until they don't need her anymore. Mm. So it's usually, you cannot expect a baby to sleep through the night until they're four months old mm. when they're on solids. So it's a lot of getting up in the night. So I just think to treat yourself, don't go out for dinner, just have a night now exactly. instead. Do you know a, what I mean? For a night just out, here you go. Have what, what price is a good night's sleep, exactly. I suppose? Alexander, what do you think about all of this? Were you a good baby? Um, Did you sleep bad. through the night? Were you a very bad baby? <laughs> oh, you're admitting it, are you? So what, you, what did you used to do? Can you remember? Um, not really, I can't. But what does mummy say you used to do? I think you used to wake up two or three nights a week, two or three times a night. And Amelia was the same. She didn't sleep through until she was six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, can, I can't remember that. You can't. You were too wee, probably. <laughs> but um, what do you think of your mum's business, then? Um, I like it. Do you think it's good? <laughs> do you think you might like to be a night nanny one day? <laughs> you might go around and help little babies settle. Oh, She'd be very lovely. good at it if she's as good as she is with her dollies. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, you know, essentially it's, it's a case of picking up the phone and calling you. So have you almost got an emergency hotline, you know, where people fall and go, I can't take it anymore, I need my sleep, help. I, part of the reason I set up Night Nannies was because I didn't want to um, remain a reporter in television because I found it very, um, uh, 
really difficult with a family. Yeah. So I wanted to set up a business I could do from home and still pick up the kids from school and spend that time with them. Yeah. So no, it's not, doesn't encroach too much on my life. And I do turn that machine to answer machine at the weekends because, you know, I need a break too. Mm. But yes, I, we get a lot of clients that felt that they could cope and then after six weeks the exhaustion has really set in and they do need help and we can usually find somebody the next day or that night. Fantastic. Now, obviously you've got a lot of experience. You've got two of your own and you've got this whole wealth, 120, you know, midwives, mm. nursery nurses, nannies, you know, you name it. What tips can you give to people watching at home going, oh, well, that's all very well, I can't really afford 60 pounds, you know, a, a pop, um, but my baby is waking up in the middle of the night, help. I think if the baby has a good organized routine in the day and they have regular structured sleeps, mm. A lot of people assume if my keep my baby up all day it'll sleep at night, but a baby can get overtired. You know how you are, or you know these children when they've done too much in the day, they they tend to have a fitful night, and it's the same with the baby. So, and if you can keep your baby up after four o'clock from tea time onwards, and if you're trying to put them down at seven or eight, they'll go down well then. Mm. Try not to let them sleep after four, and try and get a good. Um, sleep going before or after lunch like a good hour and a half a good two hours and that's hard to do and people some of my clients say my baby's a week old and I haven't got a good routine it's jolly hard to do yes. well at, at a week old it would be impossible of wouldn't course it? surely but there's a lot of pressure and a lot of people have read the Gina Ford yeah. book and, and various other books on those routines and they take it too literally but I used to think every day is a new day maybe it'll happen today and it, you know, you can only do your best and sort of strive towards it. But I think by two or three months, your baby should be in a good regular routine. But you cannot expect your baby to sleep through before they're on solids. Well, I've got a question for you because yeah. I had my first baby. It was textbook, and she did do all the nice sleepy things. But just lately, and she's 18 months now, she started waking up about five and five in the morning, demanding milk, and I. And it's, it's a real killer, as you can imagine, you know, um, because at 5 a.m. you really don't want to be disturbed. Any advice for me? I think if you can really pump, give her lots of carbs for that last um, dinner at night, you know, maybe put it to 6 or 7 o'clock, give her, her lots of potato, pasta, that kind of thing. Um, and then you obviously, do you give her a bottle of, does she have mm, milk at night? She has bottle before she goes and to bed. And then she goes to bed at what, 7? 7, 7, 7.30. And does she have blackout blinds? Because it's been very light in the morning, obviously, yeah. in the summer months. Well, it's interesting you say that because I think that maybe at 5 o'clock what happens is she gets a bit cold as well. Does she so have a baby, um, you know, the, the little sleep suit? Exactly. Sleep. She baby outgrew girl. it, so I've just got a little duvet for her now, so maybe I should think yeah, about okay, that. Yes, well. I would definitely think about that because they are fantastic because they can't get cold and mm. the blankets you know, they're in a sleep bag. So they're a very, very good invention. It could be the light, it could be, you're right, she's getting cold, but she doesn't need to be fed at five. I would water down the milk yeah. at five, wean her off that, that milk feed. She doesn't need it. You That's know beautiful. she's having enough in the day. Um, so uh, what I did with these two when I got really fed up with Amelia, um, I watered down her milk in the middle of the night. It was a feed she didn't need. She yeah. was having all her solids. She had enough bottles in the day. And did she stop waking up? And after three nights, we, I put like a couple of scoops of milk to six ounces of water, and then the next night, just one scoop of milk, and then the next night, nothing. And it was a gentler version of, of just giving her water, yes. which she was screaming and yelling yes. at. So it was a taste of milk, but just she spat it out, and it just wasn't worth waking up for. She just couldn't be bothered, and after three nights she slept through, and the, I did the same trick with him. But you can't do that kind no. of thing until they're well established on solids. So my night nannies wouldn't do that until they're on fi at five or six mm. months. But at 18 months, she, she, she shouldn't be waiting. An, and she's she getting should. into a habit. Can she not play happily in her cot? Mm, well, she kind of, at five o'clock, she's up, and, and she, she does the she's sign away. language. So she says, I want milk, you know, and it's obvious. So I kind of think, You've oh, got it. It's going to be a week of hell, it's a week of hell. hell. But you're just going to say, I'm sorry, it's water, that's it. And she's just not going to bother you Absolutely. for water. Well, I shall take that on board. I'm going to do but that But try and do it in a week go. where you're not doing anything else. I will, I will, I'll, I'll report back. Thank you for that. So Amelia, what's your sleep like now? Do you like your bed? Do they you? are fantastic sleepers. It would be oh. embarrassing if they weren't, wouldn't it, for me? Alexander, do you have difficulty getting out of your bed in the morning? Oh, so no. difficult. No. No. And it's when school starts, suddenly school he's very difficult starts, to get out of bed. You want to get up, don't you? But do you <laughs> like your bed? Is it a nice place? That's great stuff. Amelia, Alexander, Anastasia, thank you very much for coming <laughs> in and talking to us today. Pleasure.